I was like like towards the back of our line. Walsh was behind me, and our other buddy Matt was last. Yeah. And I'm like in my mirror. I realized Walsh didn't get over a rock, so I stopped. Yeah. And when I stopped, Scrap Heap just stalled out on uh. its own. And thankfully it did because all I heard was people yelling fire. Oh, God. <laughs> right after my Jeep <laughs> shut off. Welcome to the Dirt Drive Podcast. Uh, once again, we're uh, short-staffed for the episode. It's uh, myself, Tom, here with uh, with PJ. What up? Um, so since we're we're short-staffed, we're we're gonna do something that PJ are kind of familiar with and uh, talk about some tools. Yeah. Um, we're gonna get a little bit of both the mechanic side of tool choice and uh the recovery and yeah uh, yeah and then the the jeep and fire department side of the recovery yes. and safety gear tools uh, recovery and safety uh, again as usual this is not an end all be all uh decision you know figure out what works for you what you can afford these are our ideas and our input um if you think we're terribly wrong give us the feedback yeah and if you have other suggestions that's worked for you that nobody yeah. else really knows of please yeah send us pictures and give us other ideas yeah um so since uh trevor's not here to weigh in on the <laughs> lack of mechanical experience <laughs> um we'll try not to get too technical too technical we'll we'll try and, about the wing try and, and speak and english for most of it bobs um but yeah, I mean, I, I so for me, I try not to carry too much crap in the rock crawler itself. Um, yeah, as a group, we've always been pretty well equipped. Um, thanks to Tom Walk, we call him Toolbox Tom or Tech Rescue Tom, <laughs> uh, which is like kind of I always felt it was a little ironic that I wasn't like Tech Rescue or Toolbox Tom, but yeah, uh, given the fact that Tom's the paramedic rescue guy it's uh it's fitting it makes a little bit more sense uh, he's definitely over prepared but it has bailed us out of all kinds of fun situations um and that being said i do bring quite a bit of tools with me in my truck that i tow so like basically my game plan has always been get it back to camp put it on a level surface yep crack a beer and fix it yep <laughs> basically um you if know, you can't fix it on the trail yeah yeah it's some things are easy to put back together other yeah. things are not um you know a basic hand tool kit is i think yeah rule number your basic one. sockets your ba yeah. basic wrenches because even if you're even if you're just overlanding dirt roads will abuse things yep uh your roof rack can loosen up yeah the rooftop tent will loosen Dirt roads up will definitely find the things that are loose yeah. our uh, our trip with terra overland like the um their overland rack system that they have in yeah. the trunk of bravo like two of the nuts rattled off loose and then Damn. like the whole system was loose and sean was all pissed off he's like this is like the fifth time this has done this red loctite yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> or nine lock nuts yeah it's, I, I, I went with lock nuts as much as i love loctite like certain things you shouldn't lock yeah. tight um but he also he's already like we're we're redoing that whole thing we're helping yeah. him out he's he's got a plan he knows what he wants to use and it's frankly a much better plan than what's in there yep um but it's always good to have those tools with you yep. and have them organized um me being the mechanic the toolbox i bring is like it's it's from boxo yeah. Um, shout out Boxo Tools. It is an awesome like carry box. It's like a little four drawer with a flip top, and everything is. I in. actually look at those. I love it. Um, the tools are great, one, but the the box itself it comes fully stocked with everything in its like styrofoam holders. Yeah. So it holds everything really nice and tight, and. It's way easier to keep yourself organized. Um, I have a thing about bringing my good tools out off-roading because, like, 
I don't want to drop my snap on ratchet yeah. in a puddle and it disappears. You gotta have forever. like two different sets of like the off road yeah. sets of tools and then your nice work tools. I use I have a ba- I have a, a like a tool backpack full of cheap Pittsburgh like yeah. Harbor Freight crap that is now the plow toolkit. Um and like depending on what we're doing from an off road standpoint, I'll throw it in the trail rig, but I keep it in my plow truck. Yeah. Um same reasons, you know, salt and snow and moisture and yeah expensive tools don't always go well together um but yeah it's like i it the the boxo kit is a really great setup um the the whole fo- like the four drawer box is probably a little overkill for most people it's not that one is it that's uh, the five drawer it no i think the five drawer is a new new one that they just came out with um, oh, they have a KOH off-road tool bag. Well, I was just going to get there. They have a tool roll. Oh. It's actually the 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 King of Hammers edition is two different tool rolls. Um, okay. They are awesome. It is a great setup. It's well organized. Um, you know, one of my biggest pet peeves of using other people's tools on the trail is like when they just drop a duffel yeah. bag full of tools in front of you, and you're it's just like just Ugh! an assortment Ugh! of wrenches, and you're like, fuck, yeah. Um, yeah, that's definitely the the tech in me of yeah. like I want to look down and know exactly where my ten mil is at all times. Oh yeah, um, having to dig through a bag to find the ten mil and then not having somewhere to put it back. There's a tattoo for you. That ten millimeter be. socket. I just don't want to be my first one. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that, that, that could be on the list. Um, the uh, you know with with that I usually like I'll grab some power tools. Yeah. Um, like I, you know, I have a couple battery powered, yeah, like my stuff. ratchet, my little yeah. impact, um, you know, a couple of pry bars and a big hammer. Yeah. Um, the other thing, and again, this is probably more advanced for most people. I like to carry a multimeter yep. and a test light. Electrical is an, um, a, a overlooked aspect yeah. of when you're off-roading. Yeah. And like, especially like the modern stuff like jails and whatnot, yeah. like scan yeah. tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but it's honestly, your phone, like, <laughs> like, like that's what I have J Scan for. Yep. I bring my little Bluetooth OED adapter. That's yep. You know, so small, I lose it constantly. Basically, uh, <laughs> we're missing the one at the shop again. Ah, uh, yes. Um, Didn't we just put a lanyard on it? That's the good one. The oh. other one. Oh, yeah. The other right. one is missing still. Uh, <laughs> the uh, there's definitely definitely some value in that um now obviously we're getting into trail repairs that most jeep owners and truck owners aren't going to get into yeah um yeah i don't know i don't know how there are some things that we even we can't get into like we we might pull code for your jl after you've swamped it and just go (laughs) let's get the toe strap um so yeah uh, but a, a good hand tool kit the Boxo tool rolls are phenomenal. Um, the, the only reason I don't have the tool roll is because I have the box. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the box would not work in the trail rig. I was going to say the, the the only big difference with that for off-roading is putting it in a hand roll. You're not losing it. It's not jingling around. Yeah. And it's easier to secure. You can yeah. put it in like a storage bag. Yeah. No, I, I fully recognize, like, the irony of me not carrying tools in my trail rig. Yeah. Um, and that has nothing to do with the quality of the build. No. That's just me being lazy and not wanting to have multiple sets of tools. Um, Every time I've gone off-road, I've I've brought a handful of stuff, like certain sizes, certain wrenches, certain, yeah. like, uh, hand tools and wrenches and... Uh, I guess pliers, just like random stuff. Like, yeah, I may not need this, but I'm going to bring it anyways because I know if I don't bring it, this is going to happen. Yep. But every time I do bring tools, nothing, nothing yeah. breaks. So that that's one thing I, I want to do with the YJ build is when it's done, I want to put together a toolkit. Yeah. That is specifically for the YJ. Yep. It has nothing to do with me not wanting to work on other people's stuff when we're out wheeling. Yeah. But like to me, that's the ideal setup is tools for your rig. it is only what i need yeah. to fix my jeep so like it's going to be a 13 a 10 yep a, a t40 you know all these specific things that i know i need to fix what's going to break and nothing more um because carrying like they're like 
you know, our, my 60 inch toolbox is never going to fit in the back of a Jeep. Yeah. And there's always going to be something I'm going to say to myself, oh, I wish I had this. Yep. Um, which is why I bring a hammer and a pry bar because that usually solves most problems if I don't have a specialty tool. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's basically something to change a tire, whether it's a, a breaker bar, a impact wrench, a long half inch ratchet it's just something yeah um that because like that that's gonna be the number one failure people are gonna, you're gonna run into is a flat tire yeah um, i yeah. know i know guys who who have like the cheap harbor freight half inch impact as a trail rig impact darwin yeah uh well <laughs> darwin's is a ryobi and that's his only impact yes uh but there are guys like our, our buddy greg uh He's got one of the Bauer 20 volt setups that he leaves in his Jeep. Yeah, I want to do that with mine. Yeah. Like uh, I'd love to turn that Mako one into yeah. just my Jeep off road one. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's that's probably what I'll end up doing with the DeWalt once the YJ kind of evolves a little more. Is upgrade the, my shop one that I use every day and then downgrade or put the, the lower yeah. one in the, in the Jeep. Um, but I definitely bring both of those, the snap on. The three eighths impact and the uh, the little I don't know what you really call it the little attachment adapter ones. Oh yeah, the like the little quarter inch drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, power tools are probably overkill for like a general purpose toolkit. Yeah, um, but it also depends on where you're going. Yeah, um, I think if you have a modern vehicle, make sure the kits have metric. Yes. Um, I think it's probably pretty hard to find something that doesn't have a metric set these days. Yeah. But it does make a difference. Um, one of my one of my tool pet peeves are, like, the kits where the socket's labeled half inch slash 13. <laughs> like, that's not how this works. No. That's not how this works. Uh, you know, that's, they're great because they're compact. Uh, in the automotive world, things are way too tight to have that kind yeah. of play in it. And you're... You're just asking to round off a bolt and be really no chrome screwed. sockets. Uh, I'm I, I don't know I don't care. <laughs> um, I use chrome on my impacts all the time, but um, I mean like there's so many different options that come in like the blow molded cases and whatever else. I, I think the the important factor is make sure it has the sizes you'll need for your vehicle. Yeah. Um, you know, the, like a thing Harbor Freight is notorious for is skipping over their sizes of things that yeah. are common. Snap-on's bad about that, too. Uh, I feel like they've gotten better they in some of their sets. Like the, the big wrench set that I have goes yeah. from 2021 20, straight to 23. Yeah. And there's, like, no 22. I'm like, what? <laughs> I think I think 22s have become a lot more popular. Yeah. So I think that's starting to change. Um uh, but, like, like I, I had an old Harbor Freight impact socket set that didn't have a 19 mil. Yeah. And it's, like, the most common lug yeah, nut. It, it cuts off at the it, most important one. It jumped over it. <laughs> yeah. It went 17 to 21. It yeah. skipped over 18 and 19, which if, you, the, uh, if you've if you ever worked on a Jeep, 18 and 19 are, like, the two most used sizes. The ratcheting boxed end long wrenches that I have. Yep. It skips every other size. Oh, so you get like a 12 and a 14, a 13 and a 15. Yeah. Yeah. Because it has like, what is it? 18, 18 and 16 on one end. Yeah. 17 and 15 on the other end. Yeah. Like it, it has like, it's catty cornered mm -hmm. in a weird way. Yeah. I've never understood that. Like, like why are you giving me odds and evens? It's just do, do them in order. It's super reliable, but it's unreliable when you don't yeah. have the right size. Um, and. The other the other factor is a secure, like, I don't want to say cabinet, but case, right? Whether it's a tool roll, a bag, something that keeps it organized. I've seen guys, like, make, like, stringers out of sockets. Yeah. Um, which I don't love. I, yeah, that bothers me because if you need that one in the middle, yep. you have you to undo dump all of it. Yeah. And you're more you're more likely, I think, to lose a socket. Yeah, you drop it somewhere you, and lose yeah, it on the trail, and yeah. you're like, "Where the fuck?" Yeah, it bounces off a rock and yeah. disappears. Um, 
So like something where things are individually packaged, like the blow molded cases are great. Uh, you know, you can lay that on the ground and they like everything snaps into place. Was it Blue Ridge Overland that we saw? They had the uh, wax. What is it called? Not wax. The foam. Not foam. I don't know. Pull it up. I forget what they called it. Anyways, uh, they were the uh, Overland cases where you could put the hand tools. You could put your toiletry stuff like oh. it was the oh, wax, wax oh. canvas oh wax canvas cases that sounds fancy they were right next to the uh the people that were open for like 60 days the people that had like just started their business they were oh right next attica to, yeah, yeah, yeah they had all their overland stuff that you could put yeah it's the the one that um trevor wants to get his cookware stuff from I'm oh, sure ovs is it Over, OVS? yeah overland vehicle systems maybe it was probably ovs ovs yeah, Tre- Trevor. Or no, 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 no. Eye camper. There was the new. The eye camper's got a, a nicer kitchen setup that Trevor likes. Was that eye camper? It, it, it was were, one that I think. Had I think it. all three were in a row, so it could have been any of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm like, I'm just scrolling through Amazon real quick. Yeah, like everything ranges from like twenty bucks to fifty bucks. Ah, it was OVS. Okay. Yeah, it sounds right. The logo uh, look identical. Okay, the. The biggest thing I could see being a problem if if you're not a DIYer and you're not a tool person, yeah. um, Amazon's got a lot of stuff that is designed for homeowners. Yes, you know, like like this toolkit I'm looking at. It's a 136 piece. It says general household hand tools, right? Yeah. Like this looks like a good quality set of tools. Like you're like, oh wow, that's got a lot of tools in it. Yeah, but. It's got four wrenches, a hammer, a level, a tape measure, a small roll of electrical tape, and a bunch of driver bits and allens. Yeah. Like, this is going to be completely useless to you on the trail. Um, and so, like, I guess probably mechanics toolkit would be a good search function. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, let's see. Here we go, Amazon. Oh, yeah, much better. Um, you know, Harbor Freight is a great source. Um, oh, yeah. For people who are just starting out or people yep. who understand, like, disposable yep. tools. Yeah. Like, if it breaks, it breaks. Well, and, and the other thing is they're warrantied. So yeah. if you if you do manage to break that. You just bring it back. And you just bring it back and they one. exchange it pretty much no questions asked. Just make sure you have your receipt. Yeah, or give them your phone number when you purchase it. <laughs> um yeah, if you don't have a receipt, make sure you give them your phone number. That is important in Harbor Freight. Um, but I'm pretty sure, like, like all the Craftsman stuff through Lowe's is is still lifetime warranty. Um, Craftsman makes some good setups. Yeah. There are a little – some of the stuff you're buying at Lowe's is a little bit more professional-based where yeah. you're not getting a variety, so you're going to end up buying a bunch of different toolkits um, or you really got to focus in on what you're going to use and need. Yeah, most of those um – Harry homeowner places like Home Depot and Lowe's have definitely stepped up their game for like yeah. at home tools. Yep. They're not like your Sears catalog, you know, cast oh, forged or whatever nice. it is that breaks every time you try and tighten yeah. something down. So like like this wouldn't be super useful as a trail kit, but Craftsman's really up. Oh the, yeah, uh, I'm the I'm a fan box. of those plastic uh toolboxes. Yeah. So they don't yeah, rattle it? around. It keeps everything in there. Like they're yeah. they're molded to the tools. Yeah, I think the the part that would get difficult like this for like the average jeeper is like this is basically a socket set with yeah. some wrenches. Like you're still gonna have to add your pliers and yeah. screwdrivers and other things there. Um, I mean that's I, I is this is gonna sound like a sponsored ad for Boxo, and hopefully <laughs> this turns into one. Um, cause I do love my boxo tools and OVS and OVS. Um, but the, that tool roll from boxo is put together by off road guys. Yeah. Um, they, they do a lot with the like UTV side by side market. Yeah. So they know, like they understand what you need. I'm pretty sure like that King of Hammers kit. I was going to say the comes fact with they hammers, have a King of Hammers yeah. kit says a lot. It has, yeah, it comes with like. I th- I'm pretty sure it comes with like butt connectors and tape and like a test light. Like, it's it's a pretty complete it's, it's a starter set. kit. Yeah, for anybody uh, that doesn't know what they need, yep. it's like 
this is your starting kit. Like yeah. If you need something else, you have to make a list for it. Because if it's vehicle specific to what you're bringing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll get some of those on the, uh, for the shop. And that would be cool. So I wouldn't mind putting one on in my Jeep. We'll work on that. That could be that'll be a project for this week. Um, but yeah, it's Christmas. <sighs> yeah, if they're, anyone they're, who want, wants to get one of those King Hammer yeah. Boxo sets for us. Yeah, please. Yeah, <laughs> um, like like Boxo. If you want to play Santa mm-hmm. and send a couple to the shop um, for us to use, we've on been the good. podcast. Uh, <laughs> <I> promise. <laughs> uh, honestly, we, we have it. So if you want to throw some coal in the tool roll, we, I'm yeah. okay with that too. We just talked a whole bunch of shit, so maybe not. <laughs> not on you guys. Yeah, no, no. Other That's jeepers. See, pre- see previous episode. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think I think the the variety thing is a big one. Like, don't don't get suckered into like a generic toolkit that just has sockets and wrenches. Yeah, you're gonna want pliers. You're gonna want cutters because zip ties are your friends. Zip ties will fix everything. Good zip ties. Don't don't yeah. get the like cheap ones that are hanging up on the end of each aisle at Lowe's. Yeah, that are different colors because they'll yeah. break even when they're ties. tied. <laughs> Industrial zip ties. Uh, one other thing that I've always that I added that's really useful. Magnetic trays. Yes. Um, stick that thing right to whatever you're working on. Yep. And put all of your nuts and bolts in it. Because if you've never dropped a rusty nut into some tall grass. <laughs> <laughs> or a socket at that. Yeah, the sockets are at least shiny. Yeah. Um, if it's a 10 mil, you're screwed. When, when AK's motor locked up at the cove, I was putting the starter on. Oh, God. Because, like... We we tried everything to make that truck that Jeep yeah. run that weekend, uh, including buying a new starter. And I'm putting the starter in, and just hoping, hoping that I can't turn it over by hand because of my lack of pry bar, uh, <laughs> and that the engine isn't seized. Uh, and I dropped the the nut for the battery cable. Yep. And I was like, "You got to be kidding!" And of course, like at this point, I'm tired. I'm frustrated. I've been. Oh yeah. They're this trying to diagnose. Downhill. Yeah, it's going downhill. We're in the big open field, which never gets mowed. Oh, so I'm God. like itchy. It's July. I'm just I'm like cranky as it is. Like I'm not wheeling. I'm now fixing my buddy's Jeep. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Yeah, pretty much. We've we've already dragged this thing around the field like 15 times to try and break it loose, and I dropped this nut, and I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. Fuck. <laughs> and the like, I don't even know why I didn't think of it. Because we spent 15 minutes digging around the grass Did looking. Do you have a magnet? No, we just pulled... I just ended up pulling it off the old starter. Oh. <laughs> After 15 minutes Duh. of digging through the grass. Still, I'm, I'm, I don't... Maybe somebody else has found it at this point, but never found that <laughs> nut. It was... It's gone. Um, somebody will find it like 100 years from now when they're like... Yeah, metal detecting at the cove. Find all sorts of Jeep parts if you run a metal detector through the cove. Um... But yeah, the magnetic tray is a big one. Um, um, telescoping magnets and telescoping mirrors. Yeah. See, I, I don't know. I've never been a mirror guy. I've never been able to really figure out how to use them comfortably. It's. Uh, it it definitely helps, like in the engine bay or yeah. wiring, if you can't get flexible underneath the dash of a car. No, well, you're just not trying hard enough. If you're not breaking <laughs> your back, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I think that means like at a bare minimum, bring something to change your tire. Yeah, um, you know, like your if your Jeep is lifted and you have aftermarket wheels, and make sure you have your lug nut key. Yeah, that's a big one. Color code them. Co- yeah, um, that's one of PJ's favorite things to do is paint marker the backside of it the same color as the is Jeep. Is this yours? No. Do you know where it came from? No. Well, it came oh. from the red Jeep, which this week wouldn't narrow it down, but... It's okay. If if it's a different color than other Jeeps, I'll just put their initials on it. That works, too. Um, I'm trying to think tool-wise. It pretty much covers it. Like, you know, we, we, we carry a lot of extra tools because we know what to do with them. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I will say I think I've probably fixed more Jeeps using other people's tools than my own. That that was another point I was going to make is if you – whatever you don't bring, somebody else yeah. 
may or may not have. The you know, sprinkling a little fire department wisdom here. If you tend to wheel with the same people over and over and over again, coordinate your toolkits. Yes, because so uh, one person is not bringing everything. everything. Yeah, uh, like if somebody has more of something else, have yep. them bring the sockets. Yeah. Um, like like we we've also fallen victim to doing that, and then that person not being there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so always be prepared and like know what you have and who's coming on your trip. But like I said, if you wheel in the same group, you don't all need to bring half inch impacts. Yeah. You know, maybe I mean, it's two, good to have yeah. more than one, but yeah, maybe two people carry a half inch or impact. extra batteries. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely a coordination. Like, you know, if you have the one guy in the group, who's really mechanically inclined, like maybe, maybe they've got the multimeter and the scan tool and to complement their basic hand yeah. tools. Um, because they're the guy that's going to use it. Um, you know, that's, I can't tell you how many times I've been the only guy doing a trail fix with a multimeter, <laughs> right? Like, um, uh, we had that, the, that one green X ray that we've wheeled with a bunch that always had fan issues and whatnot. Like the one time it crapped out, everyone's trying to like woods diagnose it. Yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And I bust out my little $5 Harbor freight and I'm like, Oh, look, the fuse is blown. Uh, What's his name? I can't remember now. I feel bad. Carrie's brother. Marshall. Marshall. Marshall had his Jeep with us. Yeah. Before you showed up and his transfer case oh, popped right. out yeah. of gear. Yeah. And that was like a a joint effort of Viametta's Jeep holding his Jeep in place so it doesn't roll down the side of the mountain. Brian rolling underneath because he's small enough to yep. get to it. Yeah, and then the rest of us just like trying to make sure nobody else you know falls because we were literally on that yeah it's like forty five right. degree grade yeah it does help to have a tiny little mechanic gnome yes if if you have one of those trail gnome oh <laughs> trail gnome that that's a t shirt that's a t shirt <laughs> Brian we're getting you Christmas uh, presents you have a whole new wardrobe um uh, trail gnome that's so good or trail troll trail troll there trail you know. troll. Because he, he's the shop gnome. Yes, yeah, shop and the gnome trail and troll. trail troll. <laughs> I had to say that five times <laughs> fast. Uh, uh, yeah, well, so let's let's transition from toolkits to recovery. Max at, tracks. Max tracks. Traction pads. You you really, really want a Toyota, don't you? No. I'm pretty sure like they give you a set of Max tracks <laughs> when you buy it to TRD Pro. <laughs> it's in their DNA. <laughs> Like it uh, just pops out when they make a Tacoma. <laughs> comes factory. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't give them any ideas. Um, no, it's uh, we 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 like poking fun at our overlanding friends, uh, but the Max tracks are great for so many things. Like we could have used them for the Trailhawk. Um, no, we got out just fine without them. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> there was one one time we got stuck. This will be a future discussion. Yeah. Or actually, it might, end up, might end up being a past discussion. But yeah, we can we can go over it with the um, the Road Trip Home yeah. episode. Yeah, I just don't know where they'll end up being published in order. Oh, uh, yeah. The Road Trip Home. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the future past strikes again. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, Mac, Mac tracks are definitely great. I, I would say I used to be a non-believer. Not yeah. necessarily a hater, but a non-believer. Um, until I saw them in action, and like we do have a ton of slick garbage mud here. Oh yeah. Um, so there's definitely a use there. The majority of the things I've seen them used for, and Sean will tell you this. Yeah. Uh, leveling the Jeep for your rooftop tent. <laughs> okay. I, can, I mean, I because you that. you you stack them. Yeah. And then just drive over it, and it levels the. That works. Um, one of his favorite little hacks. Shout out Sean from Terra Overland. He puts a, one of the little bubble levels on the rooftop tent. Ah. So he just scurries up with the ladder, looks at it, and he goes, uh, okay, the rear rear passenger needs to come up a little bit. And he just puts max tracks down, drives up on it, scurries back up. Yep, we're level. Pops the tent. <laughs> it's, it, I, 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 it's kind of a, like a low-key genius thing. Like When you start seeing things like the Rivian that like self-levels. I was going to say, I feel like that... A lot of companies like skinny guy campers would probably benefit from like 
putting something like that into yeah. one of their Building rails, it in. yeah, like a built-in level on each yeah. corner, just so you Patent can pending. see it. Patent pending. Like that's smart. Yeah, that's little little tiny details that only yeah. people that have been overlanding would. Yeah, know. Now that I'm thinking about it. It wouldn't surprise me if there are tents and companies like Skinny Guy Campers that already have done that. Probably. And we just don't know about it because we're yeah. not really that deep into overlanding yet. Or like you said, the Rivian or probably like yeah. the Earth Roamer that has those internal Oh, yeah. The Earth Roamer is definitely self-level. They better for half a million oh, dollars. Yeah. Um, all right. We're, we're getting off topic again. Anyway. <laughs> we're getting into overlanding. Uh, yeah, we're, we're covering gear. <laughs> Max tracks are great for traction. That's why they call them Max tracks. Yep. Um Max tracks, high lift pads that actually I, the, keep it so level. The high lift pad, I think, is so underrated. It is because uh, when I when I pulled over to help yeah. that dude change his tire, I had no realization that yeah. I actually needed one because yep. it just sank yeah. into the ground, and I was like, "God Fuck. damn it!" Yeah, and again, East Coast sopping wet year round. There wasn't even that. This was summertime. Yeah, it, but yeah, it was but, the median, so like yeah, it's, it's all that drainage, it's just yeah. drainage, and yeah, um, and it was an F one hundred and fifty, so it was heavy. Yeah, we, we, it's it's not even a weight thing because like we had uh, a couple years ago when Tim's brother actually wheeled with us in his Renegade. Yeah, the Renegade split a sidewall, and we uh, had to change the tire. And w thankfully, it had metal bumpers, so like we could high lift it no problem. Yeah, but we got it to a level ground, and we're sitting there cranking on the high lift kind of giggling ourselves like wow it's not even moving <laughs> only realizing that the only thing we're doing is pushing the high lift further into the ground yeah when i helped that dude uh change his tire he ended up having like a piece of molding yeah from something it doesn't in the take back much to distribute to the force it. yeah um but yeah those little plastic bases that high lift sells yeah are fantastic the other thing um that high lift makes that is awesome is their multi-tool kit? Have you seen this? No. Okay. Well, that's news to me. Uh, Future Tim, put go ahead and throw this up on the the video as well. It's like a four-in-one tool kit that works off of your jack handle. So it comes with a sledgehammer head, oh, look a at that. shovel head. I believe what is a like some sort There's of extra Pulaski. handles. It's, it's like a Pulaski yep. tool. It's a pick-headed axe. Okay, pick a regular yeah. axe. A uh, sledgehammer, sledgehammer and, a shovel. and a shovel. Yeah, it's four in one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Uh, comes in a neat little bag. Super, super slick. Oh, it's it's not a pick headed axe. It's a. It's like a Pulaski tool. No. No. Oh. It's a. Um, I guess you could call it a Pulaski tool, but it's more of a pike. For like digging. Is it? Maybe the. One, what, what do they call it? I don't know. I could have sworn it was... I, I, I thought it was like a legit Pulaski. Shovel uh, head. For you non-West Coasty firefighter head people, axe, Pulaski tools head. are a uh, forestry firefighting tool that is very useful for a lot of things. Uh, wow, that's super affordable. Yeah. 200 bucks. Amazon has it for 134 Mm-hmm. Yep. That's a hot deal. Yeah. It's 31% off right now. That's got to be a Black Friday thing. Yep. Sorry for our future listeners. Yeah. Normal list Hopefully. price is like $194. Totally worth it. Oh, yeah. I might buy one. Oh, yeah. They call it a pick head axe or pick axe. Pick head. axe. That's what it is. Why it, is that so hard to remember? I don't know. <laughs> it very much looks like a Pulaski, but I, yes. now that I'm looking at it, it's not a Pulaski. No. Uh, Pulaski. Yeah. Uh, that's, anyway, that's more for doing. Um, I forget what winching that's what what kind of winching that's called, where you bury the tire. Oh, dead then, dead men anchors. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, on the topic of recovery gear, there's the company Dead Man. Is it Dead Man Off Road? Yes, Dead Man. That makes that awesome yep. recovery kit. We'll throw a picture up in there. Um, that's another one that if now they're a little bit pricey um but it's worth it but it's worth it because if you do travel a lot like you know for for us we're lucky if you got a winch you're probably going to find a tree yep or at least two trees that you can wrap um for a really solid anchor for winching yeah but out west or in the desert or on the beach you don't have that luxury yep um and i think beach recovery especially in our area is very overlooked yes 
um, because the Jeeps are so capable that they tend to not get stuck as easily. Um, but the the Dead Man Off Road anchor kit works as like a tree saver, as a regular like strap type yep. wrap setup. Like a, you can you can do a triple wrap type deal with it, but you can also bury it. Yep. Um, and the weight of the sand and everything will essentially become the anchor point. Yeah. Um, so the like everything we always talk about you know build your recovery gear around where you're wheeling yeah if you're if you're 90 percent on the beach look at this dead man anchor yep i mean i've seen people use like the um like, a, like an actual boat anchor yep because they're designed to dig deeper as you pull um I don't know how well that works in loose sand, but like if you can you get it go deep pretty enough, deep yeah. in the sand. Like if you're in the desert or yeah. the dunes, like they they go pretty deep. Um, you know, it's if you're in Moab and and you've got rocks, like your tree saver is probably not going to stay wrapped around the rock. No. That dead man anchor's got like the big blanket style that yeah. like you can actually wrap around a boulder. Um. And it's that it's made out of that same synthetic material that yeah. tug ropes and stuff are made yep. out of. Yep. Um, this is this is this whole episode's turning into an unpaid ad for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentionally, <laughs> uh, it's their benefit. Yeah, I mean it's our benefit too because we're informing our yeah. listeners. Um, but a good strap, you know, it, know your know your gear. If you're running a cable like a steel steel rope, yeah wire rope, whatever you want to call it, um, some sort of safety device for that, some sort of, like, weight. Um, that would be such a fun class to do, though. Oh, we, we will. We will. Like, it, it's a 23, it's a 2023 goal. Um, you know, a little spoiler alert for our listeners, if you actually are a consistent listener. We will be holding some classes and doing some trips um, as the shop slash the podcast so yeah. keep an eye out for that stuff. Um, the the safety aspect is a big one for us. You yeah. know, we, we we preach it. We've we've definitely had people get kind of upset with us over our priority of safety. Yeah, um, just because we it may be the one time we aren't just giggly redneck nerds with V8s. <laughs> you start getting a little bit more serious. Um, yeah, it's like yeah, if if you want if you want to see serious dirt nerds, give us a complicated winching and yeah. you know, like it, it gets it gets real quick and I think that's just our background in fire rescue um, cuz you know we we operate in the 1% of what could go wrong and hope that it doesn't fall on the 1%, but yeah. we always account for it. Um, so like good quality straps are a big one. Um, the, just because it's two inches wide and yellow doesn't make it a safety strap. Yeah. Um, you got to look at that load rating. Yeah. There is, you know, if it's not labeled by, what is it? Not OSHA, but <sighs> so OSHA has ratings, but so does ANSI. ANSI. That's um, the one it is. The, the biggest thing when you're when you're buying this stuff is buy it from a reputable yeah. place you know if you're if you're the weekend warrior and all you're doing is off-roading you're not into rigging you're not into true recovery or or whatever yeah just get stuff that somebody else has made sure was built correctly yeah you know dead man off-road anything from factor 55 if you buy it on quadratech or four wheel parts bubble rope Rhino USA, you know, all these places that specialize in it, they're selling you products that are rated for what you're doing. Yep. Um, assembling it correctly is on you, <laughs> <laughs> if you but the product itself is, is not going to be your fail point. Yeah. Um, you know, understand where the fail points come. This is, we're getting off topic again. Eh. <laughs> this is going to turn into a recovery episode. Yeah, a uh, but the anything that's quality is going to have a rating yeah um it may in the off-road world it may not be osha it may just be an ansi yeah, or some uh, sort of load as rating as long as tag. it has those that three or four letter yeah. you know safety company 
yep. label on it, yeah. you're good. Yeah, if, you, if you're buying it at Home Depot, look for OSHA or ANSI. Yeah, um, there's labels you want to look for. Yeah, If it's uh, not labeled and it doesn't have yep. safety ratings on it, uh, that's on you. Yeah, you'll see things like static load and shock load. Yeah. Um, the key there is static load. You know, any winching operation is a static load. Um, you'll see things for fall protection, which are usable, but they don't really apply to what we do. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're going to shop outside of the off road market, I would say look at rigging materials. Um, you know, anything that's industrial rigging is going to be the proper application for recovery. Yeah. Um, and and you don't need a ton. Like you don't need to be all nerded out like Tom no. Walk is and <laughs> and have 18 different straps that all do the same thing. Yeah. Um, you know, get yourself a good tree saver. Bubba rope. Um, yep, a good bubble rope, a good kinetic rope like that is really useful for, for snatch recoveries. Um, you snatch know, block, if you know how to use it. Yeah, snatch block is another one that's a good change of direction. Um, I, I've started to become a huge proponent for, or, yeah, proponent for... Uh, Soft shackles. Yep. Um, basically, getting rid of all of my D rings. Yeah. The that's what I want to do in the back of mine. Yeah. My little storage drop down tailgate. Um, it's a, it's a, a a weight thing. It's also a safety thing. Yeah. I don't know if they're necessarily cheaper, <sighs> but I think you yeah. get a better better uh you get better use out yeah of it. better yeah. usage out of it you can apply it to a lot more things than just yeah. a d-ring like a d-ring you're limited to uh you know what you can actually mount to yep and then you have the aspect of a giant d-ring that weighs what five pounds you know how many random rattle noises i've yeah, diagnosed that too like rings in somebody's bumper yeah well, every time i hit a bump i hear this really loud clunk yeah oh, are those d-rings new oh yeah, they are. I had that conversation with Lauren. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's the 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 soft shackles. I think are way more versatile, um, which makes them worth the extra money. Yeah, and uh, uh, a good pair of gloves is a, yes. it's a big one. Gloves are uh, especially if you have steel cable overlooked. winch. Uh, yeah. Steel cable and synthetic winch rope are definitely a topic of conversation. Yeah, uh, yeah, we could probably has their pros and cons. We could probably do a whole episode oh, just yeah. on winching, um, just, just like steel cable versus synthetic. Like, yeah, just an entire yeah. episode. Yeah, the uh, the kinetic ropes are great. Don't if you have a regular standard toe strap, don't use that with a running start. Yeah, <laughs> um, and and just like a general anchor point. You know, know, know where your points are on your rig. If you know your rig better than anybody else, then everybody can do safe recoveries. Yeah. Um, you know, don't don't be the guy in the woods that gets stuck and then you go, all right, where, where are your tow points or where are your recovery points? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. And then, you know, you're, you're relying on your buddy or a stranger to, like, have to go under the mud puddle to, to figure out where they can hook up to your, your rig to pull it out. Um, and overlooked, an overlooked thing for winch cable is definitely the uh, winch winch cable dampeners. Yeah, yeah, like the weights. Yep. Qua so I have an old. I don't know if they still sell it as I bought it, but Quadratech used to have a really nice kit. It came with like a like a four foot strap as a tree saver. Yeah. Two D rings, a ten foot tow strap. Yep. Most That's, kits do these days. Yeah, but it, it had a nice on. it had a nice reflective yeah. um, weight to put over your winch lines, because um, that's that's a big one. I mean, obviously we always want to work within the limitations, but yeah, sometimes your winch cables get damaged and things happen, and you don't necessarily notice it. Yeah. So if you're prepared every time and you throw that that dampener, that weight, yep. whatever it is. You know, even if you've got like a good heavy jacket with you, yeah, you know, I guess what like just like, something to help the line drop yeah. instead of just whipping slinging. around. Yeah, um, yeah, it's we'll definitely have to go deeper yeah. into winching. <laughs> so that, that, that one could we could ramble on for hours on that one. Um, 
So we did high lifts, high lift accessories. We did winches, yep. synthetic well, so ropes. Back to the high lift, though. Getting away from high lifts that are simpler to use, there are a lot of good bottle jack options that are you can get with like good wide bases or and like the Pro Eagle and the Harbor Freight version yeah, of it. The ones in King of Hammers and stuff. I've also seen. I haven't seen it necessarily used in in like the East Coast or like you know the. I don't know what you really call it, but the wooded areas, the muddy areas, but there's exhaust. Um, I don't even know what you call them now. They're kind of jacks, okay, but they're air jacks that you hook up to your exhaust to oh, fill them like up. Pumps it. Yep. Does your exhaust put out enough pressure for that though? I, that's what I'm curious about. I've seen them, but I haven't seen them. I don't think I've ever seen that in. In use. Interesting. Because I've seen the ARB ones or, like, the airbags that we co- uh, yeah. carry on, like, the rest yeah, of Yeah, but that runs off an air compressor. Yeah. So, like, if you have onboard air... That's can, where it yeah. comes in handy. Yeah. Um, I, there's, I know there are... I think, I think ARB makes one of them that, like works on like the m18 or dewalt 20 volt battery yeah. and it's like it's like a high lift yeah um, it's the same high lift concept but it's cordless and it's power i'll have to find that um so it's a little bit safer you don't have to worry about getting your teeth knocked out by the handle um but yeah i think the um yep there it is what's it called it's, a, it's an off-road jack and it comes with like a little tiny fire hose and a rubber i'm assuming it's rubber it looks like it. Wild. Yeah. It's a little off-road jack. Off-road? Oh, it's like a giant yeah. pillow thing. But that's what I'm saying. Like, that's more of like a sand or doom yeah. kind of recovery yeah, where you have to get it I don't up know how out s- of the sand. Yeah, I, I would almost... It's that load yeah. rating where you get the surface yeah. area. I wonder how stable that would be, like, off-center. <sighs> that's that's why I've never really liked air jacks. Yeah. Because you... Yeah. They s- floppy yeah it's just too unstable yeah yeah, it it hooks up into the bag and then you hook it hook it into the exhaust but like you said i don't know how much pressure you need i mean it is hot air if you think about it yeah but at some point the weight of the vehicle is gonna uh, give you back pressure yeah and frankly i don't know if i want that much back pressure that's is is that a two door JL with two wheels off the ground? This this looks more like a European thing. Those look like Land Rovers or Land Cruisers. I want. <laughs> okay, well, who makes that? Uh, exhaust operated off road jack. I don't think it's a four ton air jack. Four ton. Yeah, it's like a nylon. There's got to be. All right, if anybody listening has one of these <laughs> or, and wants to come by the shop and let us play with it, please. I am I am so intrigued right now. Oh, cool. It actually has, like, uh, sticky pads, like diamond, oh, diamond pads on the bottom. Yeah. I don't know what a, a 1,000D nylon means, but... I'm so intrigued. Huh. Anyways. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, apparently there are tons of jacking options. Oh yeah, um, I I am a big fan of like the Pro Eagle or the new what like with Harbor Freight coming out with the new yeah. Badland version of it. I think it's a very stable, safe thing for general people to use. Yeah, the high lift can be pretty sketchy and finicky. Yeah. Um, wow, look at that. We'll have to add that to the list of things for our classes. It's an it's airbag jack. Yeah, I've seen those. <laughs> those are big in like the the truck world yeah i was gonna say trucking um, and stuff because like you, you need a lot of lift out of them yeah um i thought i've thought about getting them for the shop because yeah arb arb makes an exhaust jack kit it's called the bush ranger the bush ranger mm-hmm. oh yeah arb send us one <laughs> we want to try it out see how fast we could fill it we use it like like one of those uh like oh, the blobs she i wonder if you can use it like a blob where like Brian sits on one side and I jump on the other and launch Brian across the lot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's how this works. <laughs> I know what we're going to try and do with it when but we get one. But the good part about those is if you don't have a place to jack from, you could you put, pretty it, much put that anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it seems so sketchy. It the, is. The exhaust part seems sketchy to me. The yeah. inflatable side of it doesn't. 
because I, 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 we've used something similar, or I've used something similar with the fire department. Yeah. For lifting vehicles. Yeah. Like the 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 strength of it isn't what concerns me. Yeah. It's the running it off of my exhaust that doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah. And I mean, there's like that. Like it's got to have. It would have to have some one way check valve i think it does yeah or else you'd end up just blowing your engine up trying to lift your own vehicle yeah interesting Anyways, so fascinated by this off of air jacks uh um, i'm gonna go down a rabbit hole yeah <laughs> so what other what other tools uh <laughs> on the safety lifts, note high lifts we, yeah d-rings synthetic rope winch rope fire extinguisher first fire aid extinguisher, kit first aids kit um uh yeah. Radios, Radi- radios are a big one. I don't, I don't know if I put that under like a toolkit thing. But it's it's definitely something thing. that you would yeah. need to have if, if in the overlanding world, the little Garmin in reaches yes. or some sort of satellite communication, some kind of, like yeah, satellite. That's tracker. definitely a big one. Um, the the fire extinguisher thing is great. Yeah. Um, that's. To me, also a tough one because I want enough fire extinguisher to make sure the fire is out, not just enough to put it out and then watch it down. slowly come yeah, back in. Yeah, watch it <laughs> so, while you're on the phone with nine one one. Watch it reignite and burn to the yeah. ground. Because um, like it's you know the little one pounders that are hang on your roll bar are yeah. fantastic, but you really got to make sure you get to it early and you yep. get to it like deep enough yeah you know if it's a small electrical fire on your battery yeah you're gonna be able to put that out but like so like the jk's jls have such a tight engine bay yeah trying to put out something that you know an oil leak that's on the back side of your block is is gonna be really difficult with a one pound extinguisher yeah um i mean that one kind of falls under the if your buddies all have one you're good um but then again with saying that you have enough if everyone has one yeah, and it's a big fire. Everyone's going to use one, right? I mean, if anybody else has a fire after that, you're kind of screwed. But yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, if if somebody has a vehicle fire, you're you're pretty much done yeah. with that wheeling trip. After uh, that. I I've always substituted my spare coolant fluids for water. Yeah, uh, one from an environmental safety standpoint. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't run pure water in the engine because of winter yes <laughs> and i don't want to rebuild the motor every year yeah. um, or replace the motor every year but my emergency use coolant is pure water that i bring with me yeah um and i have used that to put out fires as well yeah um we had a, a our buddy walsh had a massive power steering leak that we tried to patch multiple times and it yeah. caught fire multiple times <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, it's, it's one of my it's one of my favorite wheeling stories. Is I was like like towards the back of our line. Walsh was behind me, and our other buddy Matt was last. Yeah, and I'm like in my mirror. I realized Walsh didn't get over a rock, so I stopped. Yeah, and when I stopped, Scrap Heap just stalled out on uh-huh. its own, and thankfully it did because all I heard was people yelling "fire!" Oh god! <laughs> right after my Jeep <laughs> shut off, and. Uh, Alex Horvath was riding with me. I was driving. He was, we'll say, slightly intoxicated. Yeah. Because he didn't have a Jeep that weekend. So, yeah. like, he fully embraced the camping drunk thing. Yeah. And <laughs> we jump out of the we jump out of the Jeep. I grab the two gallons of water I have in the back, and I look over my shoulder as we're running towards Walsh's Jeep. And Alex just had, like, he pulled a bunch of Miller lights out of his cooler. <laughs> and he's got armfuls Miller. of Miller light running down the trail. And, like, th- thankful by the time we got there, like, the one extinguisher and a little bit of water from, like, a drinking bottle was enough yeah. to put out the small ATF fire that the was going on. The only time but, it's okay to dump beer. Yeah. Yes. It, when, what? When it's Miller light or when something's on fire? When something's on fire. Oh. And it's, and yeah, it's yeah, Miller yeah, light. If it's Miller, yeah. Yeah, because... Shout out to Bud Light and Coors Light, Miller Light, garbage. <laughs> this is a Coors, yeah. Rocky Mountain Cold. That's another episode. Beer, <laughs> beer, beer choice. Yep, oh, that could be a fun one. Actually, what's good for drinking? What's good for fire suppression? And what's what's good for just partying? Yeah, 
You know what? I have an idea for What's that. What's good for cooking too, we'll, since we'll, Trevor's not here. We'll we'll talk about I I, I know I know when we're gonna do this. <laughs> um we'll talk about that one off air though. The um, <laughs> um I totally lost my train of thought because we started talking about beer. Yeah. We were talking about fire suppression. Oh, uh, yeah. So. You can tell we're firefighters. We say fire suppression. (laughs) (laughs) Put the wet stuff on the red stuff. Uh, Yeah, but with the the fluids, fluids and spare parts is another one for your toolkit. Um, Fuses, Fuses. zip ties, hose clamps. Small stuff. Uh, You know. No, like bring a quart or two of everything that's in yep. in your your vehicle to Something begin with, in, that you can limp off of the trail. Yeah, uh, believe it or not, I don't, I don't want to say this publicly, but your Jeep will run on one quart of oil. Yeah, <laughs> so if, not well, but it will. Yeah, uh, it's better than no oil. Yep, um, one one quart basically is enough to trip the sensors and and allow it to run. Yep. Um, to get you back to camp or wherever, you know, whatever road to get a tow truck or, or whatever you need. Um, I like to bring brake lines and uh, fan belts or serpentine yep. belts. Um, my my rule of thumb is basically anything that will strand me. Yep. Like, I don't necessarily need an extra drive shaft. Like, that's, yeah. I, I can limp it home. Somebody can pull home, you out. Pull you home. Um, you know, you join the same thing. I can pull yep. an axle shaft and get it home. The or back to the trailer. I the, mean, if you're doing like an ultimate adventure, yeah. you need. Oh those yeah, stuff. yeah, that's a different story. Um, but yeah, if you if you're if you're an overlander and you're running fire roads and you're out of cell service, you know that that uh, that belt, that twenty dollar belt, yeah, that you pick up a spare at AutoZone and throw it in the back. Yep. that that can really help you. Um, Again, I hate saying this as a mechanic, but stop leak. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> emergency use only. It's not a fix. Replace your radiator and flush your system as soon yeah. as you can. Um, hose clamps are a big one. If you have an older Jeep, you can get away with some big zip ties as hose clamps. Yeah. Ask me how I know. We've seen a lot of crazy uh, uh, trail fixes with differentials, too. Were you were you wheeling with us when... I No, you, you never wheeled with me when I had scrap heap, right? Nope. So... I had fixed. I had a a coolant hose blow off. Yeah, on the trail, nobody had a hose clamp big enough. For, it was like like the big lower hose. Yeah, came off the bottom of the the water pump, and nobody had a hose clamp. So I zip tied it with like a like a super thick heavy duty zip tie, pulled it <laughs> tight, and finished the day wheeling. Oh my god, it was great. No leaks. Never overheated. It was fantastic. I had forgotten about it. And like three or four trips later, we're drive, we're out. I oh, I I don't know what it was. I was towing somebody back. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, she's running a little hot. So I like kind of backed it down and I stopped for a second. And I could hear the system boiling. And I was like, ooh, that's not good. <laughs> um, and I shut it off to let everything cool down. And in the process of shutting it, there must be like a burst of pressure or something, and it blew the same hose off. Ah. And I was like, oh, that's not good. And still wrapped around that hose was the zip tie I put on like four months earlier. Hey. And was like, wow, I've been wheeling this thing hard for four months with a zip tie for a hose. Clamp. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, it's not dumb if it works. Yeah. Um, duct tape is another one. You know, anything anything you could to patch things together to get you to safety. Um, um if wait. if your wheeling group is uh well off enough to be able to carry a welder, mm. that would be a big one. But that's something where if that's you're little, doing that's, like that's ultimate quite, adventure, like that's you, super specialized. You have to get it off the trail that day. Yeah. I also think not everybody's gonna be like yeah, I, we we could have one of like the onboard welders. Yeah, I don't know if my stick welding skills are good enough to. That's the best part. It's stick welding as long as it works. Yeah, but that's the making it work because like it doesn't have to be pretty. 
Yeah, but like with stick welding, you need a variety of different rods because you might have thicker metal. Like, there's a lot to welding that the general person's not gonna yeah do. But I would love like I my Toverlander build that we've talked about a hundred times now on this podcast <laughs> will have an onboard welder. Yeah, because and like ideally it would be just a nice gas powered like you know, Lincoln Ranger or something mounted in the bed. Yeah. That way I could do full on welding with it. And it's also an air compressor. It's also a generator. Like it can do all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. Um, totally overkill, but <laughs> why not? Uh, but again, you know, that's one of those things where you and I know how to use it. Yeah. Right. Like, like if Trevor had an onboard welder on the Comanche and his tie rod snapped in half, I don't know if Trevor could figure out how to re-weld his tie rod. Yeah, but that's 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 why I said like if if you're just trying to get off the trail and you're re-welding your tie rod end, yeah, it doesn't have to be pretty as the, long as it works well enough this, to be able to limp yourself off the this trail. This could be a f- this could be a fun experiment. What, we, breaking we, stuff? We just break Trevor's <laughs> t- tie rod in half and then make him fix it to see if the general person, like if the untrained mechanic can... I've I've seen people use high lift handles oh, as tie rod ends. And zip ties? Yep. And hose clamps? Yep. I love it. I was There's watching... those things. I was watching uh, Roadkill the other day on Motor Trend, and they were servicing or like partially servicing a coilover setup. And like the spring was like a half inch longer than the sh- the shock was, <laughs> and they used screw type hose clamps as a spring compressor. Well, zebra zebra bands. It was so sketchy, but it worked. Yeah, it's only stupid if it doesn't work. Um, what else for tools? I don't know. I feel like we've covered a lot. Oh, a uh, tire plug kit. Tire plug kit. Tire Those plug are kit overlooked for sure. Hmm. Oh. And my dog's going nuts. He really likes a tire plug kit idea. <laughs> yeah, R- yeah, R- Rusty, yeah. Rusty approves of the tire plugs. Rusty approved tire patch. Um, a little bit of, uh, you know, if you're, uh, I guess, depending on the vehicle you're running, some like fuel hose, like yeah, a little bit of like, line like vacuum hose. line and, and fuel hose would be good. Um, Again, you got to make sure it's the right stuff because modern cars have high pressure fuel injection i guess with that gas tank like a um jerry can is definitely more of like an overland thing but like spare fuel if you run out of gas on the trail and like your gas gauge yeah doesn't work definitely have some spare fuel i think that the easier one there is just make sure your jeeps and or your rigs in good enough condition to yeah but i mean go like out. anything can happen on the trail oh, 100 gauges go out because you went through a mud yeah. hole or went through a really deep set yeah. of water and your fuse for the fuel pump is just faulty was, now yeah yeah spare fuses i think are a big one we learned or i learned uh ford is using kind it's not quite a proprietary fuse but it's a very odd specific uh, fuse yes. um that. so if you're if you are a bronco new Bronco owner and you want to get into overlanding and off-roading, make sure you're pre-buying a bunch of fuses Those Raptors with too. you. Yeah. It's a Ford thing. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's in the cars. Yes. Yeah. You know, Ford. Uh, but yeah, it was the Raptors, the Broncos, like they had a weird combination yep. of like ATMs and I don't even remember what they're called, but they were some like, not. they weren't Mac, they looked like Maxi fuses, but they weren't Just Maxi fuses. specific to Ford. Which yeah, they, is so yeah. dumb. That's very yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, know your rig, buy the right parts, kind of thing. Headsets are more of a road trip thing. Yeah, yeah. If you um, King Hammer is kind of like racing yep. thing, but it definitely comes in handy if you're like spread out enough and you're trying to get somebody's attention. Yeah, but yeah, then radios. you can also get a walkie-talkie for yep. the same effect. Yep. Um, good seats, and. Uh, Seat belts, like seat belt, three yeah. pole harnesses. That's definitely something. That's not necessarily a tool, but definitely yeah. from a safety spo- standpoint. Yeah, that's definitely a big one. Um, grab handles, grab handles. A good GPS system. I yeah, mean, we're in the in 2022, so everyone has a smartphone. Yeah, if you're yeah, I'm curious somewhere where that doesn't have good signal, you want to have something that has a backup. I was recently told about 
the the new iPhone 14s being GPS communication or GPS only capable. Starlink. Um, that's more of a internet thing. <laughs> it's also like Skynet. The Skylink <laughs> RV stuff is awesome. It's not as portable as you would think. Yeah. Uh, Was it Tim that sent us that link about the dude who like hacked Starlink? No. Somebody sent me I a link that. to it. Maybe it was Travis. I think it was Travis. Sounds like he something sent us Travis a link on find, Facebook yeah. and was like, "Look at this!" It's some dude who like figured out how to like hack Starlink or you so know, like he's got free Starlink. Yeah, they have access yeah. like twenty four seven. Wow! And like a, a wide range of like outside of the Jeep, he can still hook up to it like a hotspot from his Jeep. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, uh, want to look into that? Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, I, again, I feel like it's so case dependent on what you're doing and what you have, and it's based off your rig too, like and what you're capable of. A like, YJ owner compared to a TJ owner compared to a JLU Rubicon yeah, owner, yeah. they're gonna bring vastly different things. Yeah. And 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 it will evolve, right? Like oh, yeah. it, you know, as you find what you tend to break or what you do or don't need, like I. I I've always carried a ton of tools yep. and I've scaled it back to almost no tools. Yep. Um, mostly because everybody else has tools and like, why am I going to like, I don't go out by myself. <laughs> Definitely make a list beforehand. Yeah. Like um, spend that like two hour time frame, yep. not necessarily the, the night before, but you know, a week in advance, if you know where you're going, you know what trails you're going to take. Yeah. Who else is wheeling with you? Yep. Sit down and make a list of stuff. That yeah. You give yourself bring. that little pre-trip like process. Prep. Yeah. Prep that trip. Yep. Yeah. Don't don't do what we do and just throw random shit in your Wing backseat. It. Let's go. Yeah. It's <laughs> we're uh, <laughs> we're going to go. In, let's in, go. In, in high school, my buddy and I used to call ourselves highly trained amateurs. Yep. Uh, that's basically what we still are. Uh, so we can get away with it. We, you know, it's a do as I say, not as I do. As long as I got a six moment. pack, we're going wheeling. Um, you know, we've, I, I can, I can say, we've definitely regretted the mentality more than once. <laughs> where we're going, ah, oh, shit, I really, uh, I really should start doing. Oh, I, you know, what a great example of that is one trip leaving the cove. A scrap heap had gotten a flat tire. On the trail. It, it was like the last day. It was in the afternoon. It wasn't the end of the world. We were able... Like, I could hear it leaking. Like it was like a oh sidewall God. split. And I just hauled ass back to camp. And it eventually went flat at camp. Huh. So we were like, cool. I didn't have a spare. Very irresponsible to me to not wheel with a spare. I don't have a spare. And ended up <laughs> using Tim's spare... And I was like, whatever, it's a 33. Yeah, as long as it has the same bolt pattern. Yeah, it was the same bolt pattern, same offset. I was like, I'll throw it on. It'll yep. get me home. I'll put it on the front axle. If like if it burns up the, the spider gear, so be it. Yeah. Like I'll fix it, right? Not an ideal situation, but I did what I had to do. Yeah. The <laughs> So the next morning, we're like, cool. We're going to go to the shooting range before we go home. <laughs> so we all drive up to the shooting range. We shoot for like an hour. Tim, Trevor, and Tom all decide we're leaving. I stay behind with Quiz to keep shooting. We shoot for another hour. We come down and from the, the range to where we parked, and I have another flat tire. <laughs> oh, God. And on top of that, the spare that I borrowed from Tim is now leaking. Oh, my God. So I don't even remember where we found a second spare. We ended up finding a second spare. Just ask somebody else. It was it was somebody we knew because I didn't have to like do anything crazy to get rid of that tire. Just going from campsite to it campsite. was it was somebody else's spare. No, it was somebody you else. Mean, in our, you got any spare yeah, you got any tires? Spare tires? <laughs> um, so I'm driving home on mismatched wheels and tires, and on the way out, we're we're like checking out with the coves yeah. we're leaving, and and one of the brothers is like, "Hey, your your tire is kind of flat." I'm like, "Yeah." Tell I'm, me about it. I'm out of spares and like the spare is leaking and he just kind of laughs and he busts out their out little 12 spares. volt compressor and he, he he tops me off real good. 
Chris and I hit pavement where cell service like comes back for like five minutes and then it goes away again until you're back on 50. Yeah. And I, as soon as I hit cell service, my phone is blowing up. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm seeing what the texts are and it's Tim, I'm at Sunoco with a flat in my truck because he was towing oh his God. XJ. And then Tom Walk, I have like eight missed calls from Tom Walk, so I call Tom back. And I'm like, what's up? Like, is, is Tim's tire good? He's like, Tim's tire. And I'm like, uh-oh, what's wrong? He goes, oh, Trevor and I are at Sheets. One of his brake calipers is locked up. <laughs> you I'm, guys just got fucked. Yeah, oh, and this is all with, <laughs> like, all in one morning. And he and he's on, the, like, and, like, the phone starts breaking up as he's telling me this. Oh, and I, all I get is... I think I'm just going to pinch it off so he can drive home. And I'm yelling into the, don't pinch it off. What? Don't pinch it off. What? I, you're breaking up. We can change the cow. All right. I'm going to wait for you to get here. Don't pinch the line. I'm like yelling. <laughs> and so then like I stop. I run back to quit. Tell him what's going on. He's like, holy shit. We get on pavement. We get a hold of Tim. Tim, Tim picked up a nine mil casing that cookie cuttered his tread in his truck. It literally oh. just took a nine mil hole right out of the middle of his truck. And at some point while he was driving, the casing flew out of the tire oh. and it just leaked right out. Ugh. It was wild. So then like by the time we get to Tim, he'd already had the tire changed and was yeah. like, but like had the trailer and the Jeep hooked up. It was a total nightmare. Jesus. So then the three of us caravan down 50 to meet up with Tom and Trevor and on our way there, a deer runs out in front of us. Quist was towing a utility trailer with like our grill and a bunch of other like camping supplies on it. Ends up jackknifing the utility trailer. Thankfully, it stayed on the rubber, but it was it was my grill. We used to take my grill off the deck yeah. and bring it camping with us, and the grill fell off the trailer and exploded <laughs> on the side of fifty. <laughs> Um, that became the camping grill, which only worked for like one more trip before it finally just completely crumbled. Yeah. Um, and then so we meet up with. Tom and Trevor at a sheets in Winchester and like like they're they're both freaking out. They're like, what are we gonna do? Like we're stuck. And I'm like, well, we'll just run to AutoZone and get a new caliper. They're like $30. Yeah. And we're like, oh. Yeah. We can do that in a parking lot. I'm You're like, not stranded. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna go get some mozzarella all sticks. The time. I'm gonna go get some mozzarella sticks. You guys jack this bad boy up and take the wheel off. Clearly they've never seen uh roadkill. Yeah, well, that's, so Tim and I are big roadkill fans, yeah. so we're like, yeah, it's nothing. They've done motor swaps. Yeah. So like, I yeah, I went, <laughs> I went and got <laughs> snacks, and then Trevor hopped in scrap heap. We drove down to AutoZone on my mismatched tires. Oh my god! Bought a caliper, went back, swapped the caliper, bled the brakes in the parking lot, slapped it all back together, and we all caravaned home. That is why you carry spare tools and parts. Brake fluid. <laughs> Brake fluid. Well, that's the thing. Like, we didn't have to buy brake fluid because we had brake fluid already. Yep. Like, literally, the only thing we had to buy to do all of that was one brake caliper. <laughs> brake fluid, ATF, if yep. you have an automatic transmission. Coolant. Coolant. Oil. Water. Gear oil. Gear oil. Uh, spill. Spill kit. Yes. On the spill topic kit. of fluids. Drain pans. Uh, Doesn't have to be a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Basically, the biggest biggest capacity fluid you'll run into is coolant, and you're talking a couple gallons tops. Uh, so, you know, from an oil standpoint, you're in like like a Jeep holds six quarts. Yeah. Um, you know, if you have a diesel, you're gonna have a little bit more. But I guess a place to put that oil. Yeah. Personally, uh, if if I had to plan ahead, I would have a clean bucket. Yes. That way I could put that back in. Yep. Um, so you're not digging into your emergency stash. Yep. Um, yeah, ATF is a big one. I think it's probably the most used for me. That and coolant are, ATF, are the two. For the transmission. And power steering. And power steering. Yeah. It's a multi-use one. Yeah, and like even in a pinch, you can use gear oil for power steering sometimes, depending on what it is. Yeah, yeah. It might, if your gear oil is thin enough, or brake fluid. Yeah, I, th I would probably go brake fluid before yeah. I did, uh, or just no power steering, or uh, not necessarily gear oil, but like gear oil for your transmission. Yeah, yeah. If it's a manual. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I think that's that's pretty much everything. Yeah, if we haven't covered anything, definitely let us know. Yeah. Like, if there's stuff you guys think of that we didn't bring yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, jump pack. Jump pack, yes. Battery jump Battery pack. Battery pack. Preferably one with a light. Yep. <laughs> uh, Noco makes a good one. I was going to say, there's no reason to not have one. Like, back in the day when they used to be big and bulky and ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, pain in the ass to carry. Now they're like the the Noco one that I carry. Yeah. There's they, they there's sell some them on Amazon. Like the size of your phone oh, yeah. too. You, you don't really need much, especially if you just need to start it. Yeah. But if it's like completely dead and you need to get it off the yeah, trail, those Noco ones those, are really good. Those will definitely get you off the trail yep. enough to get back to camp and then go to you know AutoZone and pick yourself up another battery. Yeah. Um. Because those things will start diesels. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're like thousand cranking it. They're they're beefy. Um, yeah. What Maybe. else is there? I don't know. We don't have Tim and Trevor to uh, weigh in uh, on the situation. Yeah, yeah it's definitely uh, definitely <sighs> easier to have conversations when you have so many people yelling at you. Yeah. Um. I think that's pretty much it. It's a good majority for like you know your baseline layout and setup. If you're just yeah. going on a weekend trip, because you could go all day if you're doing like an overland or ultimate adventure trip, yeah. where you got to bring stuff to be out for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would definitely change what I carry in the trail rig if I didn't tow it and have like a, yeah. a basically a base camp set up. There is a difference between bringing stuff to trailer your rig versus driving it to yeah. wheel. Yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're a point to point overlander and yeah. you, you don't have a base camp um, or a trailer or something, you know you're you're gonna want to be a little bit more efficient in what you carry because you need to carry more of it. Because then you can carry you can carry vastly different things in the truck that you're trailering versus yep. your rig itself. Yeah, and if you're just driving your rig, you carry both of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Well, um, I'm sure. The internet will let us know what we oh yeah didn't do or said incorrectly. Yeah, hopefully you guys have good ideas. Um, but yeah, as always, uh, tune in next week. Visit the socials of the Dirt Drive, Dirt Nerds Off Road, and uh, Dirt Nerds Motors. Thanks for listening to us ramble. Yep, DirtNerdsOffRoad dot com for swag and support. And uh, yeah, let us know if you think we're idiots. <laughs>